doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results. That's the literal definition of insanity. (laughs) And so I knew that if I continued to do the same thing over and over and I was expecting to grow or expecting to get better, then I wouldn't if I was continuing to do the same thing. So with that being said, I sat down with her. She agreed. And she said, you know what? But just to double check, (laughs) why don't you also talk with your editor and your the team at Thomas Nelson, which is the publisher that I'm writing a book with. And I kind of just threw the idea out to them. And they said, yes, you should absolutely do it. Then I said to my husband, and he said, yes, you should absolutely do it. And I mentioned it to a couple of friends. And they said, yes, you should absolutely do it. And so that was the point at which I said, all right, I knew. So once we got to the end of the summer, early fall, I knew that this was something that was going to come. And I, I saw that episode 330 was scheduled to air today on December 28th. And so I knew that I wanted to to start off 2023 under the new podcast name. Well, 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 we meet again. Welcome to episode 330 of the Business with Purpose podcast. This is the last episode of 2022 and the last episode of the Business with Purpose podcast. But, 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 don't go, don't go, don't go because the podcast isn't going away, but the name is. And I have been talking about this and kind of teasing it over the last couple of months that this was coming. And this is the episode that many of you have been waiting for the announcement of what the show is going to look like and all of that. And so I wanted to, before I get into what the new name is going to be and all of that, I wanted to just do a, a little recap because this show has been a labor of love over the last six and a half years. And so... Before we get into all the new stuff, let's recap the old. If this is your first time here, I'm Molly Stillman, and I host this show, and it is such a joy and an honor to be able to do this for a living. I started Business with Purpose back in the summer of 2016. I had worked in radio previously, and my husband worked in radio. He did radio shows and produced podcasts for other financial advisors. And he and a couple of friends had started a media company in 2015. And, you know, just in the back of my mind, for a really long time, I wanted to do a podcast. In fact, back in like 2007, 2008, I had wanted to do a podcast and I started doing a podcast, but nobody knew what podcasts were at that time. Imagine if I had kept it up. Imagine. But at the time, nobody really knew what they were. And I had guest on, uh, guest, you know, appeared and hosted on other podcasts, but it just wasn't anything that I had done myself, but I had always wanted to. And so, probably in like 2014, I had begun to rumble that I wanted to do a podcast. And so I had told my husband, I really would love to do this. And he said, great, just do it. (laughs) And then 2014 came and went and I still didn't have a podcast. And then 2015 came and I said, you know, I should, I should really do that podcast. And he said, great, you should do it. And then 2015 came and went and I never did it. Then in the, I would say late winter, early spring, of 2016, I began to talk about it again. But then my son Amos was born in February. And, you know, my life was kind of consumed with having a newborn. And then by early summer of 2016, I said, you know, I should do a podcast. I've been talking about doing a podcast. And my husband (laughs) said, Oh, my goodness, just do it. Just do the podcast. And so I remember actually, we, we got into his truck, and we were on our way to pick up a an order from a farm like an hour away. And so we had this drive to the farm an hour away and the drive home. And on the drive to the farm and on the way back, we brainstormed the podcast. We brainstormed business with purpose. And I knew what I wanted to do. I didn't know exactly what it was going to look like. But you know, at the time, I was blogging a lot about ethical fashion brands and fair trade companies and what it looked like to practically purchase with purpose. And I was, you know, writing about this on my blog regularly. I was talking about it on my social media. I had started my ethical brand directory on my blog back in the fall of 2015. And so this was something that I was talking about regularly. And I realized that I could only talk about it online so much, you know, through the written word and through pictures, I could only really tell the, you know, so much about the stories behind these 
brands and companies that were really making such a huge impact and changing the world. Companies like The Root Collective and Elegantese and you know, Love 41. I mean, I just could think of, you know, so many different companies that just were doing really incredible things, producing beautiful products. And I wanted another way to give a voice to these companies and to tell their stories because so many of these different business leaders were uh, had these really powerful stories to tell. And so I wanted to find another medium in which I could do that. And I didn't have the bandwidth or really the technological capabilities to do a YouTube channel. And so I decided to go with a podcast. And so the goal of the podcast when I first started was really to interview business owners who owned and operated ethical or fair trade businesses. So some of my earliest guests were Emily Gray from The Flourish Market and Bethany Tran from The Root Collective and Katie Martinez from Elegantese and Suzette Munson from Love 41. And the, I mean, the list goes on. I had just some of these really incredible, you know, ethical fair trade entrepreneurs that I interviewed. And I launched the show in the late summer of 2016. And from that point forward, I knew that this was something I really loved to do. I loved to interview people. I knew that I was good at it. I knew that it was a skill set that I had. And I knew that this was something that I could really put my efforts towards that would be something that would be fulfilling and enjoyable and all of that. And obviously, it is a labor of love to schedule interviews and to do the interviews and pre prepare for the interviews and then do the interviews. And then obviously, to get the show produced, which I have to once again, give a shout out to the team at Third Wheel Media, everybody from my husband to Grace and Dan to the Kellys. I could not have done this show over the last six and a half years without them, truly, because while I know basic audio production, I can, I mean, I can record and edit things myself. Uh, they make me sound way better than I probably am. They help me with my show notes, all that kind of stuff. And then I obviously do all the kind of end side production. But uh, it has been such a, you know, it's, it's a task. I mean, it's so much work to produce a show every single week. And so from the moment that I launched the show in the late summer of 2016, every single Wednesday, I have put out a new episode. I've never done a repeat. I've never taken a week off. I have uh, just, you know, grinded in so many ways for six and a half years. And that is because I have loved it. I have absolutely loved it because not only have I gotten to sit down and interview some of the most incredible people, I mean, people like Ian Morgan Cron, Kevin Fredericks, aka Kev on stage. What a dream that was. Um, there have been so many people that I've gotten to sit down and, you know, ask questions of that. What other medium would I ever have been able to do that? I've made friends through this show. I mean, people like Mary Morantz and Daniel Grothy. I've gotten to sit down with some of my dear friends like Liz Bohannon and Sharon Hottie Miller and even interview my husband. I have really just grown such respect for an immense amount of people. I mean, in 330 episodes, I think I've only had maybe five or six people that I've had on multiple times. And there have even been weeks where I've come out with two episodes. Like if I had a bonus episode that week or the, our gift guide that we used to do, you know, this was something that really um, I've worked really hard at. And the most important thing, though, has been you, the listener, and how over the last six and a half years, the emails I would get or the messages on social media or, you know, reviews that have been left or comments or just things that even people have, you know, when they've met me in person have said about how a particular interview or a particular guest's story really impacted you or how, you know, just something that you learned really shifted your mindset. We have listeners all over the world. I have <laughs> sweet listeners that have reached out to me that that live in Ethiopia and go to an internet cafe and sit and listen to the show in an internet cafe in Ethiopia. I have a sweet listener and her friends and family in Australia that listen to the show. I have listeners in Malaysia and India and Brazil and Panama. I mean, people all over the world that have listened to the show and to be able to receive the kind of feedback and just encouragement from so many of you has been such a huge blessing and something that I have never in my life ever imagined that I would get to do. 
Needless to say, it's been incredible and the honor of a lifetime. And that kind of leads us to today. So naturally, over the past six and a half years, there has been a gradual shift. It was never conscious. It was never something that I set out to do, but just the natural shift of the show has gone in a different direction than what I had initially created the show for. And that's not a bad thing. That's just, you know, as we grow, as we evolve, as we get better at our craft, I realized that pigeonholing, and I don't, I I think that's the only word I can really think of. So I hope that you hear my heart on this kind of pigeonholing myself into a show where I only interview people who own brick and mortar or like product based businesses kept me somewhat limited in who I could interview when there was so many different types of entrepreneurs and even nonprofit leaders or, you know, community activists who were making an impact that weren't necessarily in the quote unquote ethical or fair trade space, but they were using their gifts, their God given gifts, their skills, their talents, their business as a force for good. And so very naturally, I started to interview a lot of those people. And I realized probably about honestly, four years or so into the show, maybe even sooner than that, I started to notice that it was kind of going in that direction of where I was, I wanted to be able to expand the type of people that I was interviewing. And on the flip side, having a name of the show be Business with Purpose often became a hurdle for people either wanting to come on the show or people listening to the show. Because a lot of times now, if you're listening to the show, you know this. But if you were new to the show or if you somebody you were somebody who hadn't listened to the show and you just saw the name, you might think that the show is about something that it isn't necessarily about. Or it might you might think, well, I'm not a business owner or I'm not an entrepreneur. So I that's not a show for me. When that wasn't my goal is I really wanted to be able to have authentic, honest conversations about the things that we care about, the things that I care about, the things that you care about. And so about, like I said, uh, probably two and a half, maybe even three years ago at this point, I don't know, I, I can't really say for sure. I began to feel a stirring in my heart and my soul that I needed to rebrand the show. Honestly, I was really nervous to do that because I was afraid that if I did that, then you know, people would be upset or people would leave or I don't know. I don't know what I was afraid of, but I was afraid of it. And so I kind of kept that in the back of my mind. But truly over and over, over the last two and a half years, I thought I really I need to rename the show. I really need to rename the show because I would talk to somebody and they would say, oh, I finally listened to an episode of your show. And wow, it was so good. I really liked it. And uh, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be about. (laughs) So, so often I was getting these little bit of confirmations uh, or little nods that I was thinking in the right direction. And it wasn't until this past summer. So, you know, as you know, I have been working on my book, which my manuscript is due here in a few weeks. And over the summer, I was talking with my friend, Kim Butler, who is kind of like my business coach. I don't. uh, And so she is she's amazing. She's amazing. I I just love her so much. And so I have these monthly meetings with her where we sit down and we just talk kind of talk through my goals and what are the things I'm working on. And she helps to keep me focused and helps to keep me going in the right direction. And so we had a conversation in one of our meetings back over the summer. And it was right at the beginning. And she said, all right, how are things going? What's on your mind? And I finally, for the very first time, said out loud, I think I need to rebrand my podcast. I haven't said this out loud before, but I'm saying it out loud now. What do you think? (laughs) And she began to, well, first of all, she said, you're absolutely right. I have thought the same thing. And I was like, well, I think that's most of the confirmation I needed, but let's let's unpack this a little bit. And so we began to kind of talk through what would it look like to keep my podcast, obviously, and to not change a ton about it, but to just change the name, give it a fresh feel as I enter 2023 and as I enter this season of writing a book and all that kind of stuff. And I, I didn't want it to be something that I felt like I was doing only because I was writing a book. It just it was something that had been brewing for years. And I really wanted to 
I want to make sure that I'm always evaluating, growing and stretching and changing in the areas that I need to, to get better. Because if we just stay doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results, that's the literal definition of insanity. (laughs) And so I knew that if I continued to do the same thing over and over and I was expecting to grow or expecting to get better, then I wouldn't if I was continuing to do the same thing. So with that being said, I sat down with her. She agreed. And she said, you know what? But just to double check, why don't you also talk with your editor and your the team at Thomas Nelson, which is the publisher that I'm writing a book with? And I kind of just threw the idea out to them. And they said, yes, you should absolutely do it. Then I said to my husband and he said, yes, you should absolutely do it. And I mentioned it to a couple of friends and they said, yes, you should absolutely do it. And so that was the point at which I said, all right, I knew. So once we got to the end of the summer, early fall, I knew that this was something that was going to come. And I, I saw that episode 330 was scheduled to air today on December 28th. And so I knew that I wanted to, to start off 2023 under the new podcast name. So Drum roll, please. I'm going to tell share with you what the new podcast name is going to be. So Business with Purpose from, you know, is on its way out. And starting in 2023, the new podcast name is Can I Laugh on Your Shoulder? I am so excited about Can I Laugh on Your Shoulder? First of all, I love the name. It's um, actually funny enough. One of my original working titles for my book, when I was working on my book proposal over a year and a half, two years ago, one of my original titles, working titles for the book was Can I Laugh on Your Shoulder? It is not that. But I always liked that idea of this play on the phrase, can I cry on your shoulder to can I laugh on your shoulder? And what I feel like it really encompasses is a couple of things. One, it feels like me. If you know me, you know that I love to laugh. I love to have serious conversations. I love to, you know, use puns. I love to do bits. I'm just, that's who I am. And so the name, can I laugh on your shoulder feels so much more like me, whereas business with purpose just no longer felt like me. The other thing too, is it allows me to expand the type of people that I can interview and it expands the type of person that I can talk to and the types of conversations we can have. And I also feel like it'll be much less of a hurdle to get new people into our community and into listening to the show. And yeah, so I'm so excited about it. Uh, Can I Laugh on Your Shoulder will launch the second week of January 2023. So the other thing too, I've alluded to this the last couple of weeks is I'm going to be for the first time ever in 2000 or in six and a half years, I'm going to be taking off the first week of January. So there will be no new episode next week. That will give me a little bit of breathing room to make sure everything for the new podcast is ready and you know ready to launch. If you are currently subscribed to Business with Purpose in whatever app you are in, the podcast will show up. It'll just be under the new name of Can I Laugh on Your Shoulder? The other thing I am really, really excited about is I plan on doing more topical and serial type episodes. What I mean by that is for two, three, four weeks in a row, tackling specific topics, everything from marriage and relationships to parenting, to mental health, to mindset, goal setting. I have outlined a wide range of topics that I really want to tackle. Uh, I also, I have kind of some dreams of doing a music series and interviewing some really cool musicians or a comedy series and interviewing some of my favorite comedians or a Bible study, farming, homesteading, but really being able to tackle topics that I am excited to talk about and that you want to learn more about. I could not be more pumped. Some of the guests that I already have lined up, I've already interviewed some of them. People like Sandra Stanley. She and her husband, Andy Stanley, have led a church in Georgia for years. And we're talking all things parenting. I have already interviewed Megan Hyatt Miller, daughter of Michael Hyatt. I have an interview with Michael Hyatt scheduled for later in January. I interviewed Jesse Eubanks all about relationships and the Enneagram. I have some really, really incredible guests lined up and I could not be more pumped about what is to come in 2023 and beyond. 
I just want you to know how passionate I still am about doing this. And that is part of why I decided that this was the direction to go in was because I wanted to keep it new and fresh. And I wanted to just continue to produce a better show for you that you are going to want to look forward to listening to each and every week. And the other thing about the name, Can I Laugh on Your Shoulder, is I want it to be the type of podcast where you know when you are listening to an episode of Can I Laugh on Your Shoulder that you're going to laugh, you may cry, we're going to tackle hard topics and ask hard questions, we're going to encourage one another, and we're going to share the things that make us laugh, the things that make us cry, and everything in between. I really want it to feel like you are tuning into and listening to a conversation with an old friend and it just feels like something that you look forward to listening to each and every week. So that's the plan. I could not be more excited and I would love for you to reach out and let me know through email or on social media what you think of the new name and and I hope you are excited for the show. I hope you're as excited as I am. I really could not tell you how uh, just pumped I am about this. It's gonna be such an incredible transition and I'm really, really looking forward to it. As always, I want to, again, say thank you to the team at Third Wheel Media for producing the show and helping me through this. Uh, I could not do it without you. I'm grateful to my husband, to Kim Butler, to Joy Egrich reed to Steph Tresner and Brigitte Norker. I could not have done all of this without you. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your wisdom and your insight, for your friendship, and for you. Happy New Year. I pray that you all have a wonderful, amazing 2023, and I can't wait to see you next year. But for now, and for the last time, go do something good with purpose on purpose.